So hi, welcome to lecture six of the Ultimate Python course. In this course, we are going to see in this lecture we are going to see about variables. If you already know a little bit of Python, if you know what a variable is, just skip this video. It will save your time. My intention or my approach will be in such a way that people who don't know Python at all, and if it is the first time if they are learning a programming language. I want to make everything clear for them, so I will be going very slowly. If you already know this, just skip it. It will save your time. Don't take the notes. Lecture slides will be given to you, and lecture notes will be given to you. Okay. Then, <coughs> now, let us see variables. What is a variable? Basically, when you want to store something in a computer, you are going to store it in a in the memory. How do you access it? by having the memory address by holding the memory address you can actually access that value in the memory address but then memory addresses are not human readable it will be difficult to remember them so what do we use is we will use a variable name which is a synonym for the memory address right so what i mean to say is what i mean to say is let us say this is the memory and somewhere you are storing the value of 10 let us say the memory address is 1 2 3 4 hmm? instead of remembering this 1 2 3 4 if you use a variable name let us say a now a is a synonym to the memory address so you can access this value of 10 by using the variable name okay then in this example, if you see, we are assigning 95 to CSC marks, CSC marks, and we are assigning 80 marks to DA. You can print the value by using the variable name. In fact, in fact, you could manipulate or you could use the value of the variables anywhere you want in the program, right? For example, you can write like this: total marks equal to CSC marks plus DA marks. <coughs> so variables are very very handy then it is a very important interview question is python a dynamically typed language or a statically type typed language what is statically typing is before using a variable if you say what is the type of the variable then that is called static static binding right static or statically typed you, you, you have to use the word statically typed but if you don't specify if you don't specify the type of the variable before using it then that is called dynamically typed so python is dynamically typed c c++ is static which means if you are using a variable when you are using it for the first time you have to declare what type of data type it is is it int or is it float you have to specify clearly right in c or c++ coming to python coming to python you don't have to write whether it is integer or float or whatever by looking at the value assigned python will automatically understand what its type is for example here it will understand the type is an integer okay you don't have to write int or float or anything so this is a very important interview question most of the interviews will interviewers will ask this question okay now how do you know the type of a variable without declaring it right there is a function called type if you call type with the variable name it will give you what that variable is okay variables can be of different types they can be numbers they can be strings they can be boolean variables they can be lists they can be tuples we will look at lists and tuples later they are very very helpful in python okay now what are the naming conventions for a variable so in all the programming languages the naming convention is very almost similar so variable names can contain only letters numbers and a underscore right you have to use letters like small a to small z capital a to capital z and you have to use numbers you can use numbers in it or you can use underscore <coughs> and a variable name always starts with a letter or an underscore but not with a number okay i will show you 
For example, if you see this, exam underscore center underscore 210. This is a valid variable name. A122 something. This is also a variable, val valid variable name. Underscore followed by numbers is also valid variable name, right? You might think that this is not valid, but this is valid. Now, 8 followed by something is not valid because you cannot start with a number, okay? Similarly, if you look at this variable name, if you look at this variable name, there is ampersand, there is percentile symbol. These two are not allowed in the variable name. What are allowed? Only letters are allowed, numbers are allowed, underscores are allowed. You don't, you don't allow these special symbols, right? And second thing is, you cannot give gaps in the variable name. For example, you cannot write like this, greetings, space, messages. But you can put a underscore and you can write like this, okay? So don't use gaps, use underscores. Whenever there are two words in the name of, two or more words in the name of a variable, you separate them by using underscores. And Python has some set of keywords which are reserved like if, else, all these keywords which are reserved, while, for, all are reserved, you should not use those keywords as a variable name. For example, you cannot write like this, if equal to 100, you cannot write like this. This is not allowed. Print equal to 100, print is an inbuilt function. You cannot use that. You cannot use that as a variable name. And variables should be short but descriptive. So, so see, this is not a rule, this is a convention. What is a convention? Convention means all the programmers generally follow them. It is not a rule that you have to follow it. Whenever you are writing the variable names, the name should not be too short, the name should not be too long. It should be descriptive and short, right? So, for example, student name is a very good variable name because it is giving you the meaning of what it is. It is a student name, right? <coughs> now, if you write student name as S underscore N, no one will understand what that is. That will create confusion later. You can definitely use S underscore N, but don't use it because that will create some confusion later on, okay? And then name length, it is fine. It is nothing but length of the name. Everyone is able to understand it, right? Now you should not say length of person's name. This is too long. See, your name should not be too long, too short. It should be descriptive and short, okay? And now variables are case sensitive. For example, they are all strings. They are all string variables. Now, small name, capital N in the name, and all caps, all these are treated as different variables. All these are treated as different variables. All, them, all of them are strings, okay? So if you, try, if you try to print what is in there, you are going to see the output like this, okay? <coughs> and then how do you assign value to variable? How do you assign? My throat is not good. So how do you assign values to variables in Python by using Amper that equal assignment operator, right? So this equal is called assignment operator. So you can assign values to a variable using equal. You can also do multiple assignments in the same line in Python. For example, you can assign CSC underscore marks, DA underscore marks, and math underscore marks. You can assign all the three variables in just one line by writing like this. You are separating them by comma and values are separated by comma 95, 88 and 100. Now if you print them, you are going to get this, right? Now, how do you get the memory location in which variable is present? It is not important that you know it, but it can be asked in the interview, right? So now that you have variables in the memory location, how do you get the memory location? That can be done using the ID function. If you write ID within brackets, the variable name, it will give you the memory location of that particular variable and you can print it using print. For example, I got these three. These are the memory locations of these three variables, okay? So let's see some interview questions that are possible from this lecture. 
So how to get the type of a variable? This is a popular interview question. How do you find out the type of a variable in Python? So there is a function inbuilt called type. Now to that function, if you give the variable name, it will tell you what type of variable it is. Okay. And what are the various data types present in Python? This is an important question. So you have a lot of types. Okay. You can pause the video and go through all of them. For example, in numbers, we have int, float, complex numbers. And sequence, we have string, list, and tuple. Set, we have set and frozen set. Mapping, we have dictionary. Boolean, we have bool. Binary, we have bytes, byte array, memory view. And for there is also a type called none, which is none. Okay, so we will talk about all of this in the coming lectures, but for not think that, or you have to remember all this. If you are going for interviews, this will be a very popular question. And then which of the following has valid variable name? So this is valid because it is starting with the alpha, alphabet and then it, it has alphabets and underscores. And this is valid because it is starting with alphabet. And this is valid because it is starting with underscore and it has numbers. But this is not valid because it is starting with a number. This is not valid because we have special symbols here. That is why it is not valid. Now, which of the following is a valid variable name in Python? So if you look at it, this is a variable name, right? And in this variable name, there is a space. Since there is a space, it is not valid, right? So which of the following is valid syntax? So you cannot use if as a variable name. If you are using if as a variable name, that will be a syntax error. You are not supposed to use any keywords. Now, this is, this is fine because it is a variable num1. And what will be the output of the below code? We have already seen this in the lecture. What I want you to learn from this example is, <coughs> so Python is case sensitive. If you change the case, the variable will change. The variable will be a new one. Fine, see, do share, subscribe, and share with your friends because it's a free course. I'm doing it for free. So I expect that you at least subscribe and comment and like the video so that I will increase my reach. Okay, please do subscribe. Thank you. Hi, if you want to take my gate classes, we go to the website ravindrababuravala.in and you are going to see all my gate classes available there. Okay, so coming to the classes, they are all recorded. Why am I doing recorded? Why am I not doing live classes is I have thousands of students registering for my courses every year. But then if I conduct a live class, only 20 or 30 people will be there. 20 or 30, that's it. Maximum is 40 I had. The reason is live classes are little bit wasting your time. See, you cannot watch a live class at 2x speed. You have to watch at the pace at which I teach. Generally, I will be very, very slow while teaching. So if you can go through the live classes, you can watch them at 2x speed and you can complete the syllabus very fast. 400 plus hours content is there for gate. And if you are going to watch them at normal pace, it will take 400 hours. But if you watch it at 2x speed, it will take just 200 hours, right? So if you want any of my gate classes, gate computer science or gate DA, the price is just 10,000 rupees. It is very, very reasonable for the kind of quality we provide. We have test series, we have doubt sessions, we have videos, we have lecture notes for every, even you don't have to write any lecture notes. I will provide you lecture notes for every subject. You just have to sit back, watch the videos at 2x speed and revise the notes. Short notes will be provided, long notes will be provided, formulas will be written in a separate notes. Everything will be there provided to you. You don't have to work hard. And coming to, if you are planning to go abroad, we also have study abroad program. You can go through my number. My number is on WhatsApp. My WhatsApp number is in the website. If you are planning to do masters abroad, that is a very good choice. It is better than doing masters in India. So if you are planning to go abroad, we will help you out right from the, from taking the passport to getting the visa visa us visa right so we will help you out in the entire process okay so do visit the website see what is happening there even dsa course is there for 5000 rupees which is both in python and c plus plus okay so thank you so much